What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chung and Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. This is now episode nine. You already know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Follow our Instagram at Ball Fake Podcast. And make sure you're also tuning in on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Now, today we start our coverage for the college basketball season, this new upcoming season. Today we're going to get into um, some of our impact freshmen of the year breakout players and we're going to discuss our top four teams each of our top four teams heading into the season but um i'm gonna let greg start off with his impact freshman greg who do you think will be some of the most impactful freshmen so now i say i got three for you caleb love zaire williams and bj boston caleb love is is a freshman on university of north carolina tar heels zaire williams will be a freshman on stanford university and bj boston will be playing for kentucky so I'm going to start with Caleb Love. Caleb Love is out, is out of St. Louis, Missouri. He's a 6'3 guard, 170-pound guard. So he's kind of big guard for, for a point guard. And, he, and he's tall, too. But he, he's a bucket getter. He's a grinder, great, hardworking. You Natural know. score. Yep. If you think about players out of St. Louis, Bradley Bill, Jason Tatum, those guys are grit. They're hungry. They get – they're bucket getters. Like, they, they score buckets, and that's what Caleb Love is. Different type of mentality. Exactly. So, I think with Caleb Love replacing Cole Anthony uh, this year is a big is a big step because we need that point guard. We need that point guard to come in and lead this team because last year Cole Anthony had to do so much work and had to score so many points for North Carolina to win because he didn't have any other guards to help him score consistently. So, I think Caleb Love coming in with – Three other McDonald's All Americans: R.J. Dare, R.J. Davis, Walker Kessler, and Deron Sharp. I think those those people will help him. And with Armando Bar- Barricott coming back as a sophomore, and Garrison Brooks, who Garrison Brooks, who averaged 15 points and nine rebounds last year, I think him having that veteran veteran people around him and people who have already been in the program will help Experience, him. Yep. Yeah, it will help him. And help him with his development along the year. And I think that he needs to come in and be that top dog and lead this team, you know, to have a better season than last year. Because last year they said we were terrible. Roy yeah. didn't coach him well. Yeah, they Roy, lacked a whole lot of talent. Exactly. And Roy Williams said that this that was his least talented team he ever had and ever coached. So I think they have a lot of expectations coming in. And I'm actually excited to see them play as a North Carolina fan. So I'm excited to see what Caleb does at the point guard position and lead that team. So... We just have to wait and see. But my next player is Zaire Williams coming out of Sierra Canyon. He um he played with that star-studded Sierra Canyon team with Bronny James and B.J. Boston and all of them. But he was really the standout on the team. He made clutch plays in the playoffs to ultimately win them a California State Championship. Um, and he made a lot of plays in that championship game too. But he also um, – but coming into, coming into Stanford, Stanford's not known for getting a lot of, you know, five-star recruits and stuff like that. So he's – He's gonna be. He's gonna have to be that guy. Everything on Stanford and how they play is gonna start with Zaire Williams. Exactly. So Definitely will be the centerpiece of that all. Exactly. So I think with Zaire's, Zaire's scoring ability, his defense is you know so so, but it's really I'm gonna talk about his scoring ability. His scoring ability. He's three-level score. He can get to the rim. He can shoot the mid-range. And he can definitely knock down a three-point shot. Mm-hmm. So I think with his scoring ability, he's going to be lighting up the boards and help him out. If they want to be in that top three and be known in the Pac-12, it starts with Zaire Williams. So I'm excited to see him play in his game. And my last person is B.J. Boston. He also coming out of Sierra Canyon. He's not from California. He's actually from Georgia. But he transferred there and played with that star-studded Sierra Canyon team. But he was also alongside Zaire Williams. He was the guy who was just there to get buckets. He was the guy there who, if they needed a bucket, they're going to give it to B.J. Boston. They could run the offense through him. Sometimes Zaire wasn't there when <coughs> Zaire was, wasn't there and wasn't playing well. But I think he will come into Kentucky and play his role. He he don't know what his role is. His role is to get buckets. Yeah, he's get, a pure scorer. He's yeah. got really good mechanics with his exactly. jump shot. So he my does only need, thing, I would like to see him extend his range out a little bit more. Yeah, I would showcase agree. Showcase that you can really knock down a – a 30 foot jump shot and he also needs to get stronger he is kind of he is on the skinny side right so i think you know this is the time in college where you can get his weight up and you know can if he wants to drive to the basket and and they're gonna have he's gonna have tougher guys on him you know guys that are older than him yeah he so can't get bumped over he can't get bumped around whatsoever. trying to you know trying to create your shot so i think if he does those thing and like you said extend his range he's gonna be good for kentucky so those are my three man i don't know about you but what do you think about 
freshman my, this year. My my top three. Well, these aren't my top three, but these are three freshmen that I wanted to. You know, what I'm saying put a notice on a little spotlight on. Uh, I'm going to start with Cade Cunningham out of Oklahoma State. He was the number two player in the class of 2020, right behind Jalen Green, uh, another player who's playing in the G League right now. But he's a versatile forward. You know what I'm saying? This guy, he's a natural wing player with distinct ability to score the ball. His toughness and, you know what I'm saying, athleticism. And his ability to take a uh, will take him a long way. You know what I'm saying? This is a three-level scorer. He averaged 24 points per game in high school. He's also able to, you know what I'm saying, help his team out in controlling the boards. Um, but he's shown he's also been able to show the ability to pass and make the right play. He can also be, you know what I'm saying, the potential number one draft pick. And he's Oklahoma's first five-star recruit since Marcus Smart in 2012. So he's definitely going to be big man on campus, and he'll be the centerpiece of the offense. But after Kate Cunningham, I have Sharif Cooper, crafty, nice little New York style type of player. I feel like, as far as uh, you know, what I'm saying him and his layup packages and everything is a uh, he'll be the projected starting point guard for Auburn this upcoming season. He's well coached by Bruce Pearl, um, he's going to be handed the keys to the offense early on. Like I said, he's a phenomenal floor general, and he has the he has the ability to see a play ahead of time. This is a guy that is the definition of a playmaker. But some of his some of his weaknesses, I would say, is obviously on the defensive end uh, because he's – Sharif, he's a smaller player. He's only like, what, 5'10"? Five, 5'10". Ten. Five, ten. We had given him six foot, but 5'10", probably. Yeah, he probably listed at six foot, but he's only 5'10". And so he's going to be a liability on the defensive end. But this is a very passionate kid, so he's somebody that he's not going to get – you know what I'm saying? Bumped over. He's not gonna back back down to anybody. Yeah, he's also, not gonna Allen get rattled. And shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying, man? So if he can improve on his defensive, you know what I'm saying, mechanics and everything, he'll 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 be decent on that end of the floor. Hopefully they'll, you know what I'm saying, try to hide him on the defensive end. But um as far as offensively, this this is a guy who can really fill it up for and you. create opportunities for his teammates too. Yeah, like I said, definition of a playmaker. Phenomenal court vision. Um, and they have the pieces around him for Auburn to be that top two team in the SEC. So Sharif is in a great position. Like, he lucked up, man. He's in a great position. Great coach, great system, great players around him. And Auburn's shown in the past two years that they can make a run in the tournament. So mm-hmm. he's in a great position. So, but yeah, he's a great finisher at the rim um, as far as offensively. Like I said, this is a kid that's fearless, even though he's 5'10". Um he has the ability to fill it up, like I said, but he definitely has his days where he can't hit a grape in the ocean. This is somebody who I would like to see imp- add a floater to his game because at the collegiate level, they're going to have seven-footers and guys who are trained to block shots. So um, and with him being undersized, he's definitely going to need to add that to his game because, you know what I'm saying, it'll be tougher to finish around the rim. But my last impact freshman will be Josh Christopher. This is somebody – this is a California kid. You know what I'm saying? Real happy – uh, doesn't really care about what you think. He plays with a lot of emotion and flair. You know what I'm saying? This is a kid who has a high motor, very energetic. He's capable of contributing to his team in uh, an altitude of ways. I'm gonna put the. I'm gonna. You know what I'm saying? I can get a stop for my team defensively. This is. I feel like he can be a two way player. He in, really can in college and potentially in the NBA. He kind of reminds me a little bit of a Paul George, not necessarily by his demeanor, but just of how like he can play the game. On both ends of the floor, like I said, uh, he can, he's capable of guarding the best player on the opposing team. But offensively, he's great. He's really athletic. You know what I'm saying? This is a guy who can get out and transition, really bring the crowd into it, to their feet and everything. But one thing I would like to see him improve on is his shot selection. He's able to knock down a three ball, and you know what I'm saying. He's a three level scorer, but his shot selection sometimes is very bad. A lot of times on his three point shots, he looks to gain a foul instead of just focusing on making the shot. But with time and experience, that'll help him. You know what I'm saying, in the long run. But who are some of your breakout players? Like this could be, you know what I'm saying, somebody who played in the previous season. This could be returning players. But who do you think your breakout players will be this year? So I have one really, like, breakout player on my list, and the other two are, like, will fly under the radar and, like, be just impact players on our team. So I'm going to start with the first one, Rocket Watts. With Cassius Winston out, gone, graduated from Michigan State, Rocket Watts. Big loss. Yeah, Rocket Watts will will be that dude this year. 
And I have an interesting stat for you nicely. He averaged 17.8 points in his in the final four games before the COVID shutdown. Rocket Watts. Yes, Rocket Watts. So he has that potential, you know, be a 20-point scorer, bro. He, I mean, we, he, we saw that in high school when he played with LaMelo Ball at Spire Academy. Yeah, took the pressure off him a little bit. Yeah, so I think that Rocket can and will be – a 20-point score this year for Michigan State because they're, they're going to need it, first of all. And second of all, he has the tools. He can score. He can get to the rim. He is a kind of – he's a big guard. He is a big guard. He's stocky. He can get to the rim. He can he can shoot the three. He can shoot the mid-range. And, he, he, and he's an underrated defender, to be honest. He's an underrated defender. He can get you stops on defense too. So I think Rocket Watts will come in, be that person that can lead Michigan State this year and be a viable, viable part for them alongside with his uh, – his co-partner Aaron Aaron Henry, that will help him on the nights that he's struggling. But I really think Rocket Watson come in and help Big uh, Michigan State be a top in that Big Ten conversation. Okay, who's another breakout player? Um, another you? player. I'm a, I'm gonna say Keon Brooks. I think he will have an impact for Kentucky this year. He struggled last year trying to find his role. Like, what is he? What is he really gonna do on his team? Like, sometimes he looked lost. He didn't know he was. He's always gonna come in and be hustle a hustle player because that's what he was. He was that in uh, high school. And he's so he's always gonna be that player. He's gonna come in, make the scrappy plays. He's gonna bang inside. He's gonna he's gonna rebound. He's gonna get the fifty fifty ball. So I he's gonna continue to do that. But now he needs to take his game to the next level, where he's scoring around the rim better. He's starting to develop develop a fifteen foot jump shot. Yeah, and doesn't defen- need a three point shot because they have enough three point shooters. And defensively, I feel like he's somebody who could at some point be able to guard one through five, one through four at least. One through four. You know what I'm saying? Because he. I, too small for a five. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. But you know what I'm saying? He can. He has the tools. He has the, you know what I'm saying, the physique to be able to guard one through four. So that can, you know what I'm saying, put Kentucky in a great position of winning a championship. Exactly. With him, and Ke- he's going to be playing alongside Isaiah Jackson in the paint too. So I think him and Isaiah Jackson, actually their game can really play off each other. Because right. Isaiah Jackson can rim protect and be that hustle player too. So to have two hustle 50-50 grit guys who can bang around the rim and – and can pl- and if they can elevate their defense and elevate their offense, I think they can really play be a complementary of each other. So mm-hmm. I th- I'm I'm looking to see Keon have a great season this year. And my last person, my last person, I got Armando Barakat. Barakat, I think that he had a good season last year, but I think that his impact on this team will matter this Mediocre. year. Mediocre. Nah, he <laughs> nah, 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 nah. He will he will be an impact on the team just because if Caleb Love. If he if he comes out and doesn't play the way he needs to play, I think Armando and and Garrison Brooks will will elevate that team. Will be those you know the main scorers on that team. They'd be the hustle guys on the team because North Carolina is always known for their bigs. Last right. few years they've always been known for their bigs. So I think Armando will come back, especially because he decided to come back. He could have went to the draft and tested his waters in the draft, but he came back and said, "I want to be a better player." So when if a player says that, they mean it, man. He's putting in that work. So I think that Armando will come back and be a you know a fifteen ten guy. I really think he can be a fifteen ten guy on this team. So yeah, he's for sure capable of it. But I'm going to get into my breakout players. I'm going to start with Trace Jackson Davis out of IU. This is somebody he's uh, he's gained uh, all Big Ten honors. You know what I'm saying? He was third team, all Big Ten, Big Ten freshman of the week. And he averaged 13 points per game while also contributing 8.4 rebounds. This is a kid that, you know what I'm saying, he's a very, very versatile player. He's able to play inside and out. I would like to see him improve more so on the outside because, you know what I'm saying, this year he, he – he shot 56% from the field. You know what I'm saying? That was second in the Big Ten. And he was seventh in um, boards. You know what I'm saying? But, no, not seventh in boards. Seven in blocks. My bad. But, uh, yeah, like, Trace Jackson Davis, this is a kid. I, I would like to see him, you know what I'm saying, utilize his right hand a little bit more because he's a lefty. Um, a lot of times you already know what move he's going to make. He likes to go middle a lot. I would like to see him shoot over his shoulder a little bit more. But, like I said, yeah, just help – Indiana stretched the floor out a little bit more. And with him, with the addition of Christian Lander, they can definitely pick and pop and, you know what I'm saying, run that two-man game. So that's my first breakout player. My next one is also coming out of the Big Ten, Luke Garza. He's a returning um, starter for Iowa. Had a great season last year. Yeah. This is a kid. He's not even a kid, really. I mean, 6'11". That's a grown man. He's a grown bro. man, man. <laughs> He like 250 pounds or something, man. I mean, he's still very mobile for his size, too. But Garza, he's already one of Iowa's best players of all time. He was a Big Ten player of the year last season. Average, uh, 
a near double double with 23.9 points per game and 9.8 rebounds per game. The 6'11 forward, he is effective inside and outside, similar to Trace Jackson Davis, but he's a little bit of a better shooter. He shot 65% in, percent in the paint last season and 35% from three. So he's definitely somebody who is, you know what I'm saying, really impactful for his team and could also look to win an AP Player of the Year award once again. But my last my last breakout player, Keontae Johnson out of Florida. J- Johnson, he's improved a ton of – a ton on his game since leaving high school. He's known for his athleticism and ability to bring the crowd to their feet with his tenacious dunks. He's obviously best in transition. He also has an NBA body, so he's able to bounce off defenders when attacking the rim. But one thing I like about, you know what I'm saying, Johnson is he's really improved on his decision making. He'll he'll need to take on a bigger scoring role this season because Florida, they don't necessarily have like the most, what's it called? The most, mm, I don't even know, bro. Like their offensive, their offensive scheme, it's not really too intimidating. So, and they don't have too many, you know, what I'm saying scores. They have Trey Mann and their point guard, but outside of that, Florida, they're they're not all that. So, but they they finished pretty well in the. I think they were they were the second best team in the SEC last season. So I'd like to see them look to improve on that. But, yeah, Keontae Johnson, Luke Garza, and Trace Jackson Davis, those are my breakout players for this year. That's a good list. That's a good list. And I can – those – especially the Big Ten guys. Those Big Ten guys are really going to be important because the Big Ten is stacked, like you said. Big Ten is stacked this year. Top heavy. It's very top heavy. So, if Luke – if Luke and uh, Trace Jackson Davis make a huge impact on the team, it really determines who's going to come out in the Big Ten. But we're going to shift to – me and Nicey's predictions as who's going to be the best teams in the whole NCAA Power Five conference. Who you so got? I got Gonzaga. Gonzaga top down is good, bro. They're always good. They got a good coach, Mark Few, and they just got, they just got top five player in Jalen Suggs. Great point guard, long tall point guard, mm-hmm. strong point guard who can athletic too. Yeah, athletic. They really too. put on a show on the yeah, break for real. And then they got they got guards around him who can play. And then they have a they, and then even their bigs are good. Last year they got a big who's named Drew Time. He uh he was a freshman last year out of Texas. He averaged nine points, five rebounds, and he shot sixty two percent from the field. And I didn't have him on my potential breakout list, but I think that he will he will have a, a impact on his team this year. He's a six ten. He can shoot the three and he can bang inside and finish around the rim. And he's ad, agile. So I, I'm looking for Gonzaga to be that, you know. And they're in a weak-ass conference. So I think they also will. <laughs> they also will ah. have – they also have that advantage to them. But they can still beat up on the teams that they're supposed – beat up on the teams like in the ACC, in the Big 12, and in the SEC. So You're right. They can definitely – they can definitely uh, win it all. But my next team that will fly under the radar that people – not a lot of people are talking about is Illinois. Illinois has Kofi – Kofi Cock- Cochran – He's from Oak Hill. He played with Cole Anthony in high school. He was a big, strong, athletic center who last year he averaged 13 and 8. So I think he can average 15, 15 and 10 this year. So he will continue to dominate the middle, be that rim, rim protector. And he can, again, bang inside. These centers, man. These centers are, these centers in college yeah, are different. Yeah, really got NBA bodies. Yeah, they're different. They're coming out of high school with NBA bodies. Yeah, like you said, they're different. But really, their guard play, Trent Frazier. I think he averaged 10 points last year. And then their their other guard, A.O., I don't know his last name, can't say it. I'm not going <laughs> to mess it up. But A.O. and Trent, really good tag team, really good dy- dy- dynamic duo in the backcourt. So I think that they will really be really be good this year in the Big Ten. What about you, man? Uh, I'll, I, I'll give you four. I got Kentucky, Baylor, Texas Tech, and Gonzaga, like you stated earlier. I'm going to start off with Kentucky. This is a team, they're going to rely heavily on the freshman class, just like they have in the past. They got phen- phenomenal guard play. They're going to utilize a lot of on-ball screens because, you know what I'm saying, their guards are so athletic and able to penetrate into the um, into the lane and finish at the rim or create good open shots. But um, they're also athletic throughout their entire roster. This is, like I said, the number one recruiting class in the nation and the best class in the SEC Um one of those players, Isaiah Jackson, him being a rim protector, like you stated earlier in the podcast, he's gonna he's gonna be a really big, you know, what I'm saying, impact player for Kentucky's front court, and 
they're going to most likely run their offense through B.J. Johnson and Terrence Clark. Devin Askew, he's going to be their floor general. He's going to be able to – he's going to be the guy who's going to look to get everybody involved. But, but he can score too. Don't get it twisted. Yeah, he's yeah. A, he, he's definitely a capable scorer. But um, my second team is Baylor. Baylor, this is a team they're known for their defense. They prioritize their defense on keeping the ball out of the middle, limit paint touches, and they like to force their – Defenders towards the sideline. Um, last year, they were actually the number one defensive team in the Big 12. You know what I'm saying? Best team in the conference. And they also have four – they have four of their five um, starters returning. So, they're going to have tremendous depth this postseason. And another team I would like to say will be, you know what I'm saying, impactful this season, well, probably going to run, is Texas Tech. They play – they're also another team that's known for their defense. Um but they brought in Mac McClung. This is a McDonald's All-American, 16 points per game scorer, 40% field goal shooter, athletic, and he's great in transition. He's going to utilize his body uh, and sh- strength to finish among the trees at the basket. Um, they also utilize a lot of ball screens, and their stack offense is phenomenal. The stack offense, for you guys who don't know, is a big man, he sets the post screen at the free throw line. And a guard will brush off it, either cutting towards the three-point line, looking for a shot, or seeking a layup off the back cut. Now, this play, it was really effective all last season. I look to see – I they'll look to continue to, you know what I'm saying, build off that this upcoming season. And my last team, like you stated earlier, Gonzaga. Them bringing in, you know what I'm saying, Jalen Suggs, an athletic, um, smart point guard. Yeah, his IQ is – for a point guard coming in, his IQ is really high. Yeah, and this is a two-sport athlete. He was he was dominant in basketball and football, and football. in college. Three-star f- recruiting football. Right. But um, only downfall about Gonzaga, they lost their best player last year in Philip Petrusev. I think that's how you say his name. But he was the conference player of the year, you know what I'm saying, WCC player of the year. Uh, so they lost the big key to their offense. But – Suggs, he's gonna he's gonna seek to you know what I'm saying carry the low. He's gonna get help from Joey Ayeo and Corey Kispert. Those those two guys they combined for 24 points per game last season. Hopefully they can look to build on that this upcoming season. But yeah, I think Gonzaga, Kentucky, Texas Tech, and Baylor those are the four teams that you guys need to look out for this season. Yeah, and I like that list. But yeah, I really like that list. It's just like all the teams either have two or three players that are dominant and everybody else is just a complimentary to those three players. So that's why I like college basketball because these teams are not loaded. I mean, you see Kentucky's loaded, but we don't really know how they're really going to play together. So it's hard to it's hard to see. Yes, you don't have seven-game series in college. Exactly. So it's really just one and done. So th- th- those big-time players have to show up. But, yeah, I think that's – All that we got for you guys today. Uh, We appreciate everybody tuning in. And continue to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment. Repost, share with your friends, and turn on our post notifications. But like always, it's your boy, Nicey Chung and Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. Thank you, guys. And we're out. We out.